Hello everyone. So hope you are fine and doing good. So today I have come up with a new topic again, or the, with a new video on the topic exogenous process and the resultant landforms. So in my previous video, I have already discussed about landforms formation. If you haven't gone through the video yet, please click the link below in the description box for better understanding. So in that particular topic, I have discussed that landforms are the result of exogenous and endogenous processes. Now this endogenous process act internally within the earth and develops irregularities on the surface of the earth. On the other hand, exogenic process which act externally tries to label this irregularities which is developed by endogenous process. So our topic of discussion today will be based on exogenous process and the landforms developed by this processes. Now we'll try to understand the meaning and definition of exogenetic uh, processes or forces. Now exogenous or exogenic forces are those forces which work on surface of the earth externally as a result of which new landforms are formed now these landforms are the uh, this uh, these forces include the elements of earth atmosphere due to atmospheric factors due to the agent of denudation and the force of gravity are some of these uh, factors or the forces due to which the landforms are developed now we'll see the different types of agents of exogenetic processes so these are running water. Now due to the impact of running water, different kinds of landforms are developed, river erodes different landforms and gives different shapes. The next agent is the groundwater. Now due to the soluble action of the groundwater, different landforms are developed like sinkholes, shallow holes, uvalas are some of the landforms developed due to groundwater, sea waves. Along the seashore, we can see different kinds of uh, landforms like tumbolo and uh, like arch are some of the landforms that is developed by the sea waves. Now the next is glaciers and pre-glacial process. So movement of glaciers also develop some kind of landforms on this, the surface of the earth. And lastly we have action of winds. The wind actions especially in the arid and semi-arid regions the it curves out spectacular landforms like uh, mushroom rock pedestal rocks and uh, geojangs are some of the landforms that are developed due to the action of wind apart from all this weathering and mast vesting are some of the processes that also develop different kinds of land from the surface of the earth. Now we'll discuss the different processes involved in the process of uh, exogenic forces. The first one is weathering. Now weathering means breaking down of rocks into smaller fragments by the static agents of weather. It can be uh, the action of wind, running water or maybe due to the human activities now the next one is mass wasting mass wasting is a process of movement of soil or rock mass from one region to another mainly due to the influence of gravity transportation is the process of transporting the eroded material and lastly we have deposition now in this process the transported materials brought by the transported materials that is brought by the rivers or maybe by the winds are deposited in the low line areas it is a filling process now we'll discuss these processes one by one first we'll start with weathering now weathering is the breakdown of rocks into smaller fragments by agents of weather it can be due to the change in climate it can be due to the physical impact or due to the alteration of the chemicals on the rock. Now weathering takes place in situ 
which means the rock fragments are found where they were formed originally okay c2 means the place of its origination there itself it get disintegrated okay due to several factors now we'll see the different types of weathering now weathering is broadly classified into three types physical weathering chemical weathering and lastly biological weathering so we'll be discussing one by one about it so physical or mechanical weathering are the major type of weathering in which the rocks get disintegrated or breaks down due to various physical process without chemical decomposition like change in temperature due to frost action and crystal growth of the rock are some of the factors due to which a rock get disintegrated now example of physical weathering or mechanical weatherings are basically found in the arid or semi arid regions where the amount of rainfall is less where the variation of the temperature or the range of temperature is more so in such areas we can see the impact of physical weathering uh, more in this areas so there are different types of physical weathering so like block disintegration exfoliation frost action granular disintegration are some of these types of physical weathering now let us discuss about all these types one by one first we'll start with block disintegration now in case of block disintegration rocks are heated and expanded due to solar heat during the day and cooled and contracted during the night so these alternative or alternate expansion and contraction of rocks leads to development of cracks or joints in the rocks these joint become wide in due course of time and ultimately a block of rock is separated from parent rocks so this type of weathering is termed as block disintegration now basically this type of block uh, this type of weathering is generally seen in the arid areas or semi arid areas where the amount of rainfall or the precipitation is very less now the next type of mechanical weathering is exfoliation now in this type of weathering the rocks the outer surface of the rock is heated more due to which the rock layer gets expanded than the inner part the inner part is not heated that much so due to continuous heating and cooling results into expansion and contraction of the layer due to which crack develop on the outer surface of the rock air and water enter in through these cracks subsequently the layer of rocks are built up like layers of onion so this is this type of uh, mechanical weathering is also known as exfoliation or onion peeling now let us discuss about frost action now this type of physical or mechanical weathering occurs in the cold region where temperature during the day time is more than the freezing point that is more than 0 degree celsius and during the night time it is less than the freezing point that is less than 0 degree celsius so water enters into the cracks and joints of this rocks during the day time this water freezes during the night time and this frozen water which is in the form of ice requires more space than water therefore the joints of the rocks are slightly pushed apart due to the expansion of ice the next day more water is stored in the widened joints now this process is repeated many times and ultimately the piece of rock is separated from the parent rock so this type of you know weathering is termed as frost shattering or frost action the best example of this type of weathering can be seen in the temperate belt of the world as well as can be seen in the mountainous regions of the world now the last type of physical or mechanical weathering is granular disintegration now granular disintegration can occur in two ways the first one is due to expansion of minerals and the other one is due to growth of crystals now we'll see one by one about it due to unequal expansion of minerals now 
A rock contains various types of minerals, different types of minerals with light and dark color. Now light color mineral reflects solar rays while black or dark color minerals absorb more heat. Therefore this dark color minerals expands more and contracts. Therefore cracks develops in the rock due to such unequal expansion of the rock. As a result, the minerals are separated from the rocks, forming cavities in the rocks and disintegrate in the form of grains. Now the next type of granular dis disintegration is due to growth of crystals. Now in case of porous rocks, where the rocks have numerous microscopic holes, water rises up to the cavities in the rock due to the capillary action. And if this water contains salt in dissolved form, then when water is evaporated, the salt forms tiny crystals which remains in this porous surface. And this crystal becomes larger due to the repetition of this process again and again. As a result, they extend pressure on the adjoining particles of the rock which are separated from the rocks due to excessive pressure. So hope you have understood with the concept of physical or mechanical weathering. So let us discuss with the next topic that is chemical weathering. Chemical weathering can be defined as disintegration or decomposition of rocks or building material due to chemical reaction, mainly due to water and dissolved substances that is present in the rock. In case of chemical weathering, when the rock disintegrates, those disintegrated rocks have different chemical properties they are not same right? their chemical properties changes when they disintegrate now the both of these rocks have different identities water plays a very significant role in disintegrating the rocks like it accelerates chemical weathering without water no chemical weathering take places therefore Chemical weathering predominates in hot and humid regions of the world like near the equatorial regions, tropical and subtropical regions of the world, etc. Now we will study the different types of chemical weathering. So they are oxidation, then carbonation, hydration and lastly solution. So we will be studying about all these one by one. First we will start with the topic oxidation. In the process of oxidation, the minerals present in the rock have chemical reaction with oxygen. Example like rusting of iron. In this process, iron is combined with oxygen and the ferric oxide layer of reddish brown color is formed on the surface of the rock. So this process is called oxidation process. So whichever the rock that contains iron, when it reacts with oxygen, okay, it converts into a reddish brown color. Now let us discuss the other type of chemical weathering that is carbonation process. Now in this process, the atmospheric carbon dioxide, when it come in contact with the rainwater, it forms a weak acid like called carbonic acid. And this carbonic acid reacts with the carbonate rocks like calcite limestone marble and chalk are some of the carbonate rocks it reacts with these rocks and over the time it disintegrates this type of chemical weathering is also seen in the hot and humid region where the availability of water is there now the next type is hydration hydration hydro means water so in this process minerals absorb water and expand so here due to the absorption of water by the rock the volume of the rock increases and the grain loses its shape okay so ultimately they breaks down or they get decomposed or disintegrate so best example for this is feldspar which change into kaolin through hydration process now the last process is solution so in this process some of the minerals get dissolved in water they are therefore removed in solution like rock salt and gypsum are removed through this process apart from that this process depends on the nature of the rock okay some of the sedimentary rock have porous 
as they are affected more than the igneous or the metamorphic rock common salt rock salt are more soluble uh, soluble rocks so this were the different types of chemical weathering hope you are clear with the topic chemical weathering now we'll proceed to the next one or the last type of weathering that is biological weathering weathering caused by any organism is termed as biological weathering it is also termed as organic weathering various type of biological weathering are also related to mechanical or physical as well as chemical weathering now we'll see the different agents of biological weathering these are man then plants and animals so all these important biological agents decompose and disintegrate the rocks into fragments now let us discuss all this agent in detail how this agent plays an important role in disintegrating the rocks so starting with man or human activities now man converts physical landscape into cultural or man made scape by building houses roads dams bridges forts etc the physical landscape is totally changed due to mining or industrial activities agriculture also involves leveling of land or construction of canals etc so all these activities of human beings directly or indirectly relates to weathering of the rocks plants also plays very important role in the weathering of the rocks now rocks have joints or cracks rain water is stored in this joints or cracks the root of the small plants enter into this cracks or the joints in search of water and to seek support as the plant grows the roots become thicker as a result the joints become wider and the rocks are gradually disintegrated so this kind of uh, weathering is also one of the example of biological weathering now we'll see how animals plays an important role in weathering activities burrowing animals such as rabbits insects and white ants help in losing the material they also bring large amount of material out to the surface hence the physical structure of that particular part become weak and rocks are exposed to various type of weathering process so this were the biological agents which plays a very important role in disintegrating the rocks hope you have understood with the topic rest other topic other uh, exogenic process will be discussing in the next video and we are uploading the video very soon stay tuned